In this video, I'm transforming Bikini Bottom into Lego. I'm gonna be making not only SpongeBob's house, but Squidward's and Patrick's as well. Let's get into it. I had to start with SpongeBob's house, and I knew it'd be the hardest for two reasons. First, round shapes like pineapples are hard to make in Lego. And second, I don't have a ton of orange Lego bricks. It's kind of a rare color, at least in my collection but I wanted to try to make it anyway since it's so iconic. The first thing I did was make all of these orange plates to use for the sides of the house, which are all connected with these snot bricks. Honestly, I think the sides turned out to be way too blocky, and I wish I could have rounded them out more, but getting them to this point basically used all of the orange plates in my collection that would have smoothed them over, so I just had to deal with it. After connecting the sides together, I added in these round windows, which you can't see through, but to be fair, you can't see through the actual windows on the original either, and I think the light blue color is the best to match what we see in the show. Speaking of the original, SpongeBob's house has these darker orange spots that I considered adding, but didn't like the way they looked so I ended up taking them off and just went with this orange look. For the pineapple stem, I initially figured I'd use these Lego plant pieces, which have been used in the official Lego sets. However, it just didn't look that good to me, so I decided to build the stem out of regular green Lego plates. This looks a lot better to me because it continues the pattern of exposed studs that I started with when making the sides. I then added SpongeBob's chimney, which uses this cool curved piece, then an assortment of undersea flowers that we see at the base of SpongeBob's house, and this door at the front as well which is fully functional and kind of fun to spin. I wasn't finished yet though, because all of the houses for today's video have fully finished interiors too. To go inside of SpongeBob's house, you can simply lift the entire pineapple, or just remove one of its sides. Lifting the whole thing makes posing easier on the first floor, but I prefer to remove one of the sides since it feels more like a full house that way. It also allows you to see the first and second floor together. I tried to make everything in the house resemble what we see in the show. So on the first floor, I made these two chairs that are each made out of life rafts and buoys. They're also both in minifigure scale. These wall decorations are really simple, but I really like how this one turned out with these Lego eyes and these hook pieces. I made this end table, as well as Spongebob's signature TV, using a minifigure diving helmet and torso, along with these two antennas. There's plenty of room for all of the minifigures to be posed around, and I raised the rim around the base so that the house would fit snugly over it. For easy access to the second floor, you can completely slide it out, where you'll find Spongebob's bedroom and bathroom. Spongebob's bed has these tiki poles and this green life buoy. To wake him up in the morning, you'll also find this mega horn alarm clock, which uses this Orient Expedition hat for the pipe and this heart piece from the Wizard of Oz's Tin Man for the alarm clock. I also threw in this ladder that's sometimes in the background as well, along with this SpongeBob style of door, which leads to the bathroom. In there, you'll find the tub and shower head, which was a lot of fun to make since the original shape is so wonky. I used this interesting curve piece, this piece which I found to be incredibly useful for a ton of builds, and this one which is originally a droid head. You can even add water to the shower too, and I had to add this toilet as well. For some finishing touches, I added this printed buoy piece as well as this mirror. This video is brought to you by viewers like you. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider liking it to help this video reach new LEGO audiences. For a bonus fact, SpongeBob's Pineapple has been released in LEGO three different times. The first was back in 2006 with the set Adventures in Bikini Bottom. For 2006 standards, I guess it's okay, but honestly, I've never liked any of the officially released builds for SpongeBob's house. That set also included builds for Squidward's house, as well as this incredibly bad design for Patrick's Rock. We'd next see the pineapple three years later in Good Neighbors at Bikini Bottom, but then, a new version would be released in 2012 in the set Bikini Bottom Undersea Party, which offered some improvements to the original design that was slightly less blocky. Unfortunately, 2012 would be the last year for official LEGO SpongeBob sets, and the theme appears to be dead in the water as LEGO idea submissions are continuously denied. After finishing SpongeBob's house, I had to make a foundation for it to sit on, which I built up using a ton of tan LEGO bricks. The entire thing is elevated more than three bricks off the ground so that I could actually build Patrick's house underground, but we'll get to that later. I sprinkled it with some studs to give it some sandy texture and laid down the road to lead to the houses as well. Let's jump into Squidward's, which I think looks the best of the three. In the show, his house is based off of these tiki looking statues that are called Moai found on Easter Island, which is part of Chile but is literally in the middle of the ocean. It's also an emoji as well. But back to Squidward's house, it's obviously dark blue, so I'm not sure why LEGO has only ever made it in gray the two times they've released it. Like SpongeBob's house, my biggest problem with building Squidward's was just 
just having enough parts in dark blue to find a way to make it work, since that's another somewhat rare color. A ton of the dark blue bricks in my collection came from a single set, the Rex Celsius from the LEGO Movie 2, which is probably one of the biggest collections of dark blue pieces in a single set ever. But even still, I didn't have nearly enough blue bricks to just build it up from the base vertically, so I ended up building the majority of it on its side, using a mix of plates, slopes, and the regular bricks that I did have. But having a ton of studs exposed again ended up working well since it matches the texture of SpongeBob's house while allowing me to add the facial features for it as well. The eye windows are similar to SpongeBob's, but I used gray to provide some contrast to the rest of the blue. I then added in this angular nose built out of these wing plates, as well as this giant unibrow. And last, I added these blocky ears to the sides. At the base, you'll once again find a door leading into the house's interior. To access it, you just lift up the entire house. Squidward's interior isn't quite as large or detailed as SpongeBob's, but you'll still find matching furniture on the first floor. For the bamboo look that we see in the show, I use these gold studs. Some other details include this sink and these cabinets. On the second floor, I had just enough room to make Squidward's canopy bed, as well as this nightstand and this lamp. Another thing that I made sure to do for these builds was make the interior pieces easily removable so that you can arrange the minifigures however you want. If I had to pick a single set from the original Spongebob theme as my favorite, I'd probably have to go with the Flying Dutchman. In spite of the boat being undersized compared to the show and it using that single large airplane piece at the front, it still captures the look of a classic LEGO pirate ship pretty well with the cannons and windows along with that printed sail piece. The minifigures included were all exclusive variants, with this being the only set to ever feature the Flying Dutchman. But with all of that being said, I really think the original Spongebob line of sets were undercooked and don't really hold up today, even when considering that they were all released 10 to 15 or more years ago, especially when compared to other sets like City and Star Wars that were released around the same time. I'm not trying to be a hater, but so many of the builds have awkward gaps, too many large blocky pieces, and just look kind of ugly. If you think I'm completely wrong, or missing something, please let me know down in the comments. The theme is an important part of LEGO history, but I'd love to see what LEGO could do with the theme today because I guarantee every set would look 10 times better. For the final house in today's video, we have Patrick's Rock, which admittedly looks simpler than the other two. However, it had one of the same challenges as SpongeBob's in that it needed to be round to match what we see in the show. It's built up using a mixture of sideways building techniques as well as standard vertical ones. On the top, I had to add the golden arrow that we see on top of the rock. To get inside of Patrick's house, I added this hinge that we see in the show as well so that Patrick could stick to the rock too. Inside, you'll find the interior lowered down into the sand that I mentioned earlier. Getting to build it that way was one of my favorite parts of this entire video. I made him this green armchair along with this yellow lamp. For the TV, I made it almost completely in tan, since a lot of the time in the show, everything inside of Patrick's house is made out of sand. After finishing Patrick's house, I almost called it good on the entire video, but it just didn't feel quite displayable enough. So the last thing I added was the entire blue backdrop for the ocean. Once again, there was no way that I was gonna have enough bricks in that light blue color to get it tall enough. So I ended up using plates to give it the height that I wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. I then added in these plant pieces to echo the flowers that we see in the background of the show, as well as these white studs to simulate some bubbles rising to the surface. I really think adding the backdrop helps the build to pop out a lot more and helps you feel more immersed in the build. Let's recreate some iconic moments and scenes from the show. For Squidward, I made him this clarinet using just three pieces. I also gave him this stand for his music. He's up in his room trying to play, but he keeps getting annoyed because SpongeBob and Patrick are outside playing in this cardboard box, which I used as a reference to the episode Idiot Box. Next, I added in this guy who's chasing SpongeBob and Patrick around Bikini Bottom and even trying to smash SpongeBob's door down like a maniac as he screams for chocolate. If you give Spongebob the rainbow piece from Kermit the Frog, you can recreate the imagination Spongebob meme. I also gave Spongebob and Patrick these custom net pieces so that they can go jellyfishing. For the jellyfish, I'm just using this clear pink piece. However, in some of the original Spongebob sets, they used this chef hats piece in clear pink, which is an absolutely genius part usage on the part of the designer. If you haven't seen it already, you may want to check out my Krusty Krab custom build. But anyways guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed getting to see my version of Bikini Bottom. Let me know your favorite Spongebob moments down in the comments, and until next time, see you later.